are you interested in creating this sort of result from a simulation of a pyramidal lattice composite? And here we show simulation of a compressive behavior as well as a shear strain behavior. If this is the kind of thing that you're interested in, then you have come to the right video. So let's sit back and relax as I show you how to undertake this computational modeling. So welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael O'Cree. Here we're going to walk through how to create the domain and how to apply the boundary condition and ultimately end up with numerical simulations that we're going to see to make sure that you understand what is going on here. The publication that I'm going to use based on comp compression performance and failure modes of 3D printed uh, pyramid lattice truss. So the virtual domain would be a virtual domain that looks like this and it basically is a pyramidal lattice structure composite. So what we see here is the base related to the length of the truss and those, those dimensions are all kind of linked together. So but effectively we, we're going to be dealing with a system where the truss has this diameter of four millimeter, the angle of inclination of the strut is 60 degrees as shown here. The length of the strut is 30 millimeters. The th distance T here is 18 millimeters and the strut height can be calculated with this value. And it has a pyramidal lattice structure arrangement. So this is the virtual domain that we're going to work with here. So right at the center here, you see the pyramidal lattice structure made up of four different strut legs and the PLA plastic is what we're going to use for that. And at the top end, you've got an aluminum face sheet that is going to be used to protect the lattice structure. So now if we continue a little bit more, just to understand a little bit around the virtual domain. So if we section through the di diagonal of this lattice structure, then we begin to see the relationship between all the parameters that we talked about before. So for example, here, the length of this trough is 30 millimeter, the angle is 60 millimeters, and doing a bit of calculation, we'll find the con connections between all the numbers in the way they are here. So I wrote a MATLAB script that kind of helps you to automatically calculate these numbers, these positions for a different kind of um, strut length and all that. So we're putting the MATLAB script in the description section of this video so that you can download it if you need that. The material we said is going to be made of PLA and aluminium will also be the backing sheet. So the properties are all given there. So finally, what kind of case studies are we looking at doing here? So there are two case studies. The first one will be a simple universal compression and then the second one is uh, shear stress deformation. So these are the two things that we're going to do. So if you're finding um, value in what I'm sharing, please do subscribe to this channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. So we'll jump into Abacus right away to begin this modeling. Okay, the first place I would like us to start is with this MATLAB code that I talked about previously. So if you look at this MATLAB code, what I'm trying to find out are the conne connections, these points on this domain as shown in this. And this is obviously related to this picture, which I already showed previously. So if you then look very closely, so what we have here is um, the thickness, the distance T, and the angle of the, and 30 degrees and D. And based on that, we can then get all these properties. So if we run this code, so these are the sort of results that we are going to be getting. And so we're going to be using this result as we start off with our plot. So the first point that we need is this point B. So I'm going to connect, collect this point B. So this is our start point. Okay, so here we are in Abacus. So we're going to then start the modeling. So if we first start the next, the first thing we need to do is to create the strut. So let me call it the left strut. So I'm going to use the sweeping action to do this. So the first thing is to create um, the angle of inclination of the struts. So basically two struts like that. And then let's make sure that we have it as angle 60 degrees. So then we know that the position where this happens, according to this picture, is this. So I'm going to move that. So I'm going to translate. So basically, I'm going to move this line from here to this location, to that location. All right, so that's that. And then we can sketch any arbitrary strut of any dimension that we want. So this is fine and we can delete that. So we've got an, a strut. So now the angle that we want to use is a circle. So the, the path will be a circle minus two and zero. So that's the diameter of the circle. 
So we start from there. So that's basically our strut. So we can do the same to create the right strut. So I'm going to create a copy and here is going to be so the right strut. So now all we need to do is to go open it up and then go to the path. So we want to make sure that the path is right. So but I'm going to take a mirror image. So first I introduce a mirror line and then click on this and select the mirror option. So I'm going to move it. So this is my mirror line and then this is the quantity I want to mirror. So basically it creates the other alternative. So which is fine. So we finish with that. And then we just need to regenerate. So to make sure it's there. So basically we've got the two of them. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that we actually isolate this. And I'm using a trick here. So I'm going to create a dummy thing. I'm going to call my cutting plane. So I'm going to do it by extrusion. Now in this cutting plane, basically what I'm looking to do with the cutting plane is this information. So the cut plane. So I've got the dimensions here. So I copy that. So select the square option, paste it in there. Okay. And then copy the second one, which is my cutting plane, paste it in here. All right. So that's a cutting plane. And then you could create some other thing outside. So this is fine. It's the plane that I'm going to use to extrude cut. So I'll go to the assembly and bring all three instances within my window. So if you see here, so I've got a system here where the actual structure we're looking for is right in the middle here. So I'm going to use this as a cutting plane. But before I do that, I would need to accept. So I'm going to call this like one. So I'll return all the intersection, select that. So this is one first case that we're working with. So this is this case. So then we need to extrude cut through so that we can then isolate what we're looking for. So this is why I provided this cutting plane because it gives me a window to cut through the structure. All right, so this is one of the arms of the structure. So the next thing we're going to do is to create another arm of that. So if we create, okay, another leg of that. So there are two of them together. So what we need to then do now is to rotate the other one at angle 90. So I'll select that. Which instance are you looking to rotate the second leg? And how about rotating about the Y axis 90 degrees? So I've got the structure. So that looks all right. So we've got that. So the next thing we need to do is to create the base plate. So that's my base plate. Again, I'm creating it by extrusion. So if you go here, the corner of the base plate is given. So I'll copy that, click this. So I'll paste that base plate there. And then the other one is also given here. So I'll copy that and then we'll also paste it here. So that's basically my base plate. So how much extrusion are we looking for? Again, this code works out that which we can use. So you can use that code, you know, however you like, just download that code and use it for your calculation. So if your strut lengths are different, then you could always do that. So that's why I provided that code. So we can bring it into the model now. So which is the base plate. Okay. So the best plate is right there. Now we need to do some, some work on it. So basically if I select it and pattern it, so I'm doing a linear pattern. So I'll take this out. So I'll change the direction of linear patterning. So which is this. So if I flip it around, okay, it's on the other side. So I just need to change this distance. This distance will be half that distance. So, so I'll put it in there. Okay. So that's about balanced. Then we could delete this, which we don't need. So basically we have sort of the structure that we're interested in, but there is something about this structure. So if you look at this picture here, this arms should actually be diagonal. So if we come back to our back, so what we need to do with this is basically we select that. Okay. So with instances, I want to rotate those two instances about the Y axis. Now 45 degrees would be, so it's now diagonal on that axis. So this is excellent. So we've got the structure the way it needs to be. So what we're going to then do is to, that we're going to move the structure to the top here. So what I'm going to find out first and foremost is what is the coordinate of this point? So this is important because what it will tell me is the Y axis. So how much I need to move the structure in the Y direction. Okay. So the other thing I need to do here is this other base. So if we then do a, this linear patterning of this one. Okay. So what we need, okay. We don't want it in that axis. So we will remove. Okay. So if I take this off 
and then I basically want it patterned in the y direction and then rotate it so so you can see that's what we want so that's where this number comes in so this 25.908 so if I copy that and paste it in there so this is how much translation I want but however in translating to this point we've not accommodated for the height the new height of this base and that is two so if we add seven to 25 here then it's perfect so we now have a proper structure which consists of the base and the top and everything is all together in the way it should be all right so the final thing we need to do is to merge all things so i'm going to call it pyramidal lattice structure so i return everything and then i got that done so we've got our structure all set up in the way it should be everything is fine okay so what we now need to do next is basically to go back and mesh the model so if we double click on that all right so 2.9 is fine so select everything yeah okay so tetrahedron is fine so we can mesh that and then everything looks good so we've got a really good structure that we can work with so we can then create the materials so our materials the first one will be a pla material with an elastic property and so that's the plastic property and then we could also add damage as a doctor mode of damage so i'm going to use 0 0.10 percent strain for fracture strain the triaxiality in compression for this will be 0 0.33 and 1.0 for that case so that's what we find with this and then we could also create the aluminium case so the we're just going to allow it to be elastic so 78 for one nine and 0 0.33 so we're not going to include plasticity because you never get to plastic regime so it will only be elastic in this case so we'll create the section so and okay so we've got those two implemented the way we need to be so then we'll do a section assignment so we'll select the base and the top which are the two sections that's going to be based on aluminium and then we'll select the middle section which will be based on the PLA okay so again we check so we've got an excellent model it's all meshed so we then work with our sets so what sets are we interested in so the first one is I'm going to just work with the base only so that's fine and then the top set which is the top plate so I'll select that and I need to introduce, so if I go back to the path module, so I need to introduce a reference point. So let's put a reference point here. So, and then we need to create a reference point set. So that's that. So we've got those models. Step will be a loading step. So a static general loading step is accepted. Our history output. So this will be based on the set and we're going to extract it based on the reference point and you trim in the displacement in x y and z direction so we're going to use that to plot stress and strain plot at the end so the other thing we need to in introduce a constraint equation so the constraint equation will have one on this axis so we're going to constrain the top which is where we are going to apply our load first in the y direction with respect to the reference point in the y direction as well so we got that so those are the two cases that we're interested in here so then we think about the boundary condition so we just fix the base securely okay and this would obviously the base is going to be fixed in all possible directions so this is fine now we're going to introduce our load so our load will be associated with the loading step and we're going to apply it on that reference point and this load would be only in the y direction or the other direction will be fixed in the y direction i'm going to make this minus six okay because the overall length of this material is around 57 so approximately you know six ten percent strain will be okay for this so we've got our load here we've got everything implemented the result looks all right so we just need to create a job so right at the top if i go back here and rename this so i'm going to call it pls all right so we can then create a job which will be all right while we're still at it so let's copy this model and then do the next one which is pls okay so let's create a shear case 
So everything will remain the same. We need to change the PLA model so that the triaxiality will be zero. For a shear stress, the triaxiality is zero. Okay, because all the, uh, the trace of the nominal stresses will be equal to zero. So tri uh, stress triaxiality will be zero. So we make that change. And then we come to the loading involved. So the load here would be now acting in the Z direction. So it will be zero for this axis. And then in the Z direction, it will be minus Z. Okay, so this is kind of what we want because we want to push it in the other axis. So it's pushing it in that axis. All right, so that's really all that we need. Then we think about, we change the constraint equation a bit. So the constraint equation will now be moving in the Z direction, but every other thing will be the same. Okay, so we can then create a job. So everything is there. So we can then submit those two models. So the models will run and then we'll look at the result right away. Okay, so let's look at the result that we generate from this. So the first one is this Y compression. And so this is what we're going to see with the Y compression. So in terms of a mistress, so we get this kind of nice concentric uniform compressive behavior about the center line. Okay, so if we increase the uh, scaling factor of the compressive behavior, you end up getting this, this kind of result. So if we then look at the plastic strain, it really shows you so what's going on. So you get a lot of plasticity and a buckling happening right on the trot, uh, struts as you undergo this compressive behavior. So if we take away the, the meshing, so you end up with a, a nice result that you can see here showing you what's happening in all the, all the direction. So what if, if we decide to hide the material so that all we're looking at is just the struts. Um, so you can then see how nice the deformation is going on in this way. So that's for the compressive case. So what about the shear case? So again, we get a similar kind of result. So if we animate this, it shows you just the vermis stress as the structure is deforming in vermis stress. So if we move this to plastic strain, so it gives you the plastic strain. You can see what's happening to each of the legs as undergoing plastic deformation um, across across board. Final thing we're going to do is we're going to get a stress strain plot. So if we go back to the compressive case, so if we click on that, the history output comes in here. So in the compressive case, we're interested in the y-axis and the y-displacement. So the reaction force in y and reaction force stress in that direction. So if we plot that, then it gives you a nice elastoplastic material model as well as the displacement of which you can combine to generate a stress strain plot. Again, if this is the kind of thing that you like, please do subscribe to this channel so that when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. If you are interested in learning and looking at other videos around lattice composites, so I've got this video here which talks to you about lattice composites generally you know for a body centered composite and this other video we tell you how you can model lattice composite with periodic boundary conditions thank you for your interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next video bye bye